All right, so we're back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we can actually use uh, the authorized endpoints, basically the resources that require OAuth 2 authorization, where you'll need to provide an access token. I'll show you how we can actually use those endpoints to do even more cool things as well. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how we can actually subscribe to a channel using the YouTube API. So the first thing that I'll need to obviously do is I'm going to go ahead and go into our project. So uh, let's go back to the Google console real quick. And I want to go to that project that we just created. I'm going to show you how we can actually configure the project with OAuth 2. And like I said, I'm going to leave the code uh, in the description. This is from the uh, tutorials about Google OAuth 2. And you can use the same exact code. It will work just fine. Okay. It will allow you to log the user in with, uh, your Google, with the Google account. Okay. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to take this code. Again, all the code will be in the description. It'll be on a Google, it'll be on a GitHub repository. You're going to take this code and you're going to use this code to actually log in with your Google account on localhost, of course. And then you're going to save the access token temporarily. Like you're just going to copy it and use it as a request. Now, just to just disclaimer that we're only using this for demonstration purposes. Don't actually do this for a real application. In an actual real application, you'll need to obviously save the access token encrypted somewhere right and of course you'll need the refresh token to refresh the access token in case the access token expires okay but i'm only doing it this way i know it's a little bit wonky but i'm only doing it this way just to show you how to actually use the youtube api especially the authorized uh, endpoints okay the endpoints that bas basically require the access token so what you're going to do is you're going to go to the project that you created so i'll go to this one because this, this was the one that i created Okay, and now let's assume that we already have our API key. We and I think we already have the YouTube API already enabled already. Yep, YouTube API is already enabled. Yep, the YouTube data API is already enabled. Perfect. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and click on OAuth consent screen and you're gonna configure this. So again, I've already, I've already showed you how to do this in the in the Google OAuth 2 tutorial, but I'll just I'll just run through this very quickly. So for the user type, just select external app name, call it whatever you want, YouTube OAuth 2 app, and just enter your email address. So I'll just enter mine and uh, developer contact information. I'm just going to go ahead and use the same email. Wait. My Alexis. All right, save and continue. Now for the scopes, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to first enable these two and then you're going to want to make sure you enable um all of the scopes that you're going to need based on the endpoint that you're going to be calling now i'm just going to go ahead and enable every single one of them just for now okay and of course you can always revoke them but just enable it there's like about uh like nine of them yep just click update Okay, save and continue. And then for users, I'm gonna go ahead and add my email address. Because we're we're using our OAuth 2 application in test mode. So we need to add our users. If you publish the app, then you don't have to worry about this, but I'll just add my email, save and continue, and then we should be done. Okay, now go to credentials, go ahead and create the OAuth client ID. And then just select web application for the application type uh, for the authorized redirect URL. Go ahead and copy uh, this one right over here. API auth Google redirect. This is the one that we're using for the Google OAuth 2 project. Okay, just create that. And then this will give you the client ID and the client secret, which is where you're going to place inside the .env file for the client ID and the client secret right over here. Okay, so I just figured out how to just run through that very quickly, just in case that some of you are confused of what to do. But like I said, all the code is going to be on GitHub, so don't worry. All you have to do is just clone it, okay, and replace it with your values. Now I'm gonna, I'm just gonna reuse the project that I was using already because I already have everything already configured already. So if you look over here, I already have uh, the client ID. I have my OAuth two application already set up have my scopes 
I'll set up over here. Let's just go ahead and edit the scopes. Yep, yep right over here. Okay. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, now, assuming that you have done all that, let me just do one more thing as well. Um, okay. All right, so we're pretty much done with that. So we have all the scopes enabled. Now, what we need to do is we need to get the access token. So I'll show you how we can get the access token. It's very, very simple. Now, what you're going to want to do is first make sure you run the application. You shouldn't get any issues. If there's any issues, uh, you can contact... Uh, me on my discord server or you can just raise an issue on the github repository but there should not be any issues okay it should run just fine and uh, make sure again like i said make sure you have uh, the client id matches the client secret matches and make sure the redirect url this is very important because if you if you have mismatching redirect urls there's going to be issues okay so just make sure the redirect url matches the one that you have configured on the google application so once you have started up the application and the server is up and running, you're going to go over to the localhost port 3001 slash API slash auth slash Google. And this will redirect you to the sign in with Google page. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just select uh, this account over here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and enter my password. All right, so I just entered my password and it redirected me. And you can see that we're getting the same error. This is completely fine because like I said, we have not actually set up sessions yet. So it's going to happen, but don't worry. Uh, what's important is that you look in the logs and you look for the access token. And like I said, we're only doing this just to get the access token. In an actual application, you wouldn't do it this way. You would actually save the access token encrypted somewhere, like specifically the database, for example. Okay, likewise for the display name and the emails and all that other kind of stuff whatever it is that you need for your application. But we're going to go and take this access token now. And uh, actually, let me actually uh, mention this. We actually authorize ourselves without the scopes that we need. So if we actually tried to use this access token for the endpoints that we needed, it would actually give us an error. Okay, so we actually need to make sure we select the correct scopes. So uh, to do that, uh, let's go over to the subscriptions resource and let's look over at insert. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go ahead and copy this URL. And this is going to be a post request. I'm just going to copy it first and I'll go ahead and paste this right over here. And uh, it requires, uh, I think it says it requires at least one of the following scopes. So I guess uh, if it requires only one of them, then we only need to copy one of these. So let's copy uh, YouTube, this one. Seems, seems to be this, the most simplest one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and paste this right over here like this, okay? And now we're gonna go ahead and re-authenticate. So let's do that. Whoops. And uh, it doesn't really show you much. I'm not sure why it does not show you the scopes, but uh, what you should see some, if you pay attention to the address bar, it should show that scope appearing somewhere up there. If I can find it though, I can't seem to see it, uh, but it's fine. Uh, it didn't give us an error, which is good. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and select the account. And it's going to tell you Google has not verified this app. And again, like I said, you're only doing this for development. So it's okay. Just go ahead and click on continue. And it's going to tell you Google, OAuth to Google wants to access your Google account. And it will just say it'll, uh, you're going to allow it to manage your YouTube account. And then we'll go ahead and click continue. And it's going to go back to here and that's fine. But we're going to go ahead and copy that access token, the new one right over here. This is the latest one right over here. And I'm going to copy it and we're going to go ahead and use that. Okay. So uh, to use the access token, you're going to go over to headers and you're going to pass this in as uh, the value for the authorization key in the headers object. So if you're making an API call using like say Axios, or some HTTP library and need to pass in the headers manually, you would do authorization as the key and then the value would be 
bearer and the value of the token like that. Okay? Just like that. And now, this has to be a post request. And to get this to actually work, uh, we do need to pass in a request body. And uh, fortunately, they do tell you, uh, they do give you an example of how this works. So, uh, but specifically though, what you need to do is you're going to go over to body and we'll select raw JSON. And it should just be snippet uh, resource ID. Let me actually show the code real quick. Because it should be somewhere over here. Second. Here we go. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to basically uh, do snippet resource ID. And then channel ID. And then you're going to get the channel ID that you want to subscribe to. And so for the uh, re channel ID, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just simply... Uh, let's see. Give me one second. I'll go ahead and just use the channel ID that I used for mine. So this is my channel ID over here. And we'll make it so that it subscribes to my channel. So um, let me show you something real quick. So this is what my YouTube channel looks like currently or my other YouTube channel. So this is just like a temporary, or not a temporary, but like a, an alternative YouTube channel. Okay. Um, and you can see that right now I have no subscriptions whatsoever. And watch this. I'm going to go ahead and paste in the channel ID. I'm going to go ahead and click send. Let's see what's going on. Uh, oh, yeah, we need to include uh, snippets. Let's see what's going on here. I am curious why this is being problematic. I guess we do need to pass in the part. So let's do that. So let's do question mark part. Let's just do snippet. So let's create this post request. And so it gave us a successful response. And now if I refresh the page, we should see that we are now subscribed to my channel and it's in the developer. See how that works? Perfect. And of course, if we wanted to unsubscribe, we can go ahead and use the delete method. Okay. And this cost, this, this, uh, uh, this method costs 50 units. And it tells you the scopes that you'll need for for the access token for the authorization. And all you would do is just pass in the subscription ID. So um, if you actually look at Postman, it should tell you, it should give you a subscription ID. I think it might be, I think this might be the subscription ID, I think. I think, I think this might be the ID. We'll save this. But... What I'll do is I'll go ahead. Let me actually go ahead and see this. Let me look at overview. And I wonder if it gives you an example of what a subscription ID looks like. I don't think it, uh, I don't think it tells you, gives you like a signature of how it looks like, but it's okay. We'll, we'll try this out ourselves. So let's go ahead and copy this endpoint. Let's go to postman. Let's use the delete method and we'll go ahead and copy the headers as well. So headers authorization and we'll just need to pass in an ID and that ID is going to be passed in as a query parameter, not a request body. And it says do not pass a request body when calling this method. Um, so it says it needs a subscription ID. Okay. And so what we'll, we'll do is we'll do ID equals, and I guess I'm guessing this is the idea of it. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and do this. And it gave a, it gave, it gave us a tool for it. And if I refresh, you can see that we're no longer subscribed. So that's pretty cool in my opinion. And hopefully uh, you all find this very helpful. So that's going to conclude the end of this tutorial. So in this video, all I did was I uh, pretty much uh, showed you how to uh, get the scopes for the access token and I showed you how we can actually authenticate with our Google account to get the access token and then we can use the access token to make API requests. Now again in a real application you would not actually do this. I'm only doing this to show you how you can actually invoke the API 
with the access token because a lot of people might be confused about that so hopefully this video made sense and if you guys and girls enjoyed this video definitely go ahead and check out my other videos on my channel and i do have a discord server so feel free to join it if you need additional help so thank you for watching and i'll see you all in my next episode peace out